Good morning. It is raining cats and dogs here, and so the lighting is not what it should be for a beautiful Saturday. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, but I thought I'd come on and do just a little simple tutorial, sort of something Eastery, possibly. Um, I did have someone request to see the um, Skin Perfecting Concealer in Scarlet, which is the lightest shade that I ever use. So I think I'm going to do a um, liquid foundation, maybe a stick foundation. I don't know. We'll get there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is put primer on while I sort of game plan my look for the day. But I thought I would just do something kind of bright and cheerful and springy. Say share. Perfect. Hi Kim, how are you? So Kim, did you want to see the liquid foundation or the stick foundation? Because whichever I have both. So if you wanted to see one or the other, I can do whatever you want. But I have the Scarlet Skin Perfecting Concealer already out, so I don't forget it. And I'm just putting primer on my freshly washed melon. Liquid. All right, look what it is. So the deal with concealer is I really feel like you can't go too light. It's all in how you blend it in. Although I do see people that have really, really, really dark complexions try to put like a white primer or a white concealer on. And obviously that is not going to look as good as it should because it's just too much of a contrast. Just because, you know, if you were to put a contour on that was way out of there, it wouldn't look right either. So I usually say to go a maximum of three shades, three to four shades darker than your foundation is in either direction. So if you're going concealer, you can go up to three shades lighter than your foundation. If you're going contour, you can go up to three shades darker. All right, I let just getting all my goodies out so I don't forget anything. Um, I also, when I do my concealer, I always blend it in with a clean, damp blending sponge. If you don't have one of these, I get mine at Target. This is the Eco Tools blending sponge. It's actually pretty large, um, considering like to scale with my hand. They're actually much smaller before you wash them. So if you're at Target and it doesn't look quite this big, when you bring it home and run it under hot water, and it sort of puffs up from just like a sponge would when it takes on the water. It makes it so much more pliable and soft on your skin. And the moisture that stays in the sponge makes it that much easier to blend out your makeup. So that is a tip that I would suggest to everyone. Also primer. If you don't use primer, you definitely should. All right, so let me just get my goodies out so I can sort of figure out what I'm gonna wear today always the toughest thing. Um, I used Sumptuous. I'm trying to do like a different lipstick every day. I'm going to use Sympathetic today because I love Sympathetic. Uh, I'm trying to do like different lipstick shades all the time to show because the kudos this month. Do you moisturize before you primer? Every day. Yep. Um, you should wash your skin every morning and um, I use rose water toner on it. So I wash, I tone, and then I moisturize every day. I find that I get more acne if I don't because I do need to wash off my night cream and things like that. Hold on. I just think this is, this is better. This is clean. There you go. Um, I find that if I wash off my nighttime routine, then my daytime routine looks 100% better. So I always try to go in and, and do that. There have been mornings where like I was just running super late and I had to get the kids on the bus and I literally will just take like cold water and sort of rinse my face off with it. I try to make those days kind of few and far between because I really do feel like there's a difference. My face wash though, because I use the Uology, it has a lot of um, hydration in it because those are the boosters that I picked. I picked things like... Um, hydration, renewal, um, elasticity, things like that, sort of anti-aging. And um, so I don't get dried out. No matter how much I wash my face, it's not going to dry me out. So that's kind of why I'm not afraid of it. When I used to use another brand, though, 
I used to be afraid to wash my face twice a day because it would get tight because it was so drying. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go in with Skin Perfecting Concealer, and this is in the shade Scarlet. So this is the lightest shade of concealer that we have. Um, just as kind of a baseline, does the skincare help with hormonal breakouts in the chin area? That was actually my worst area. So I did, I used to have a ton of acne down here. It was really bad. Um, the two things that I did, and I did them at the same time, was I kind of edited my diet a little bit and I cut back on things like I, I've taken soy completely out of my diet. I used to eat a lot of veggie burgers that had soy in them and unfortunately my body does not metabolize that well and I always get <clears throat> hormonal acne from soy. I also cut out dairy and I cut out gluten for a while but that didn't make a difference. The biggest difference I made was soy for my skin but the Uology did. I don't have any acne here before anymore and I almost had like a beard of zits before so I would say that the Uology does help considerably in that department um, okay so I don't put a ton of concealer on I wish that this was easier to see without it blowing out in the light but that's as much as I put on it's really not a lot and I spread it out with a splurge cream shadow brush because I like to get this is gonna sound funny and it's going to whatever I hear people say the opposite I laugh I want as little makeup on as possible and I don't want like thick cakey gloppy makeup on my face I actually watched someone doing their makeup this morning and they were putting concealer on and she's like so this is really thick concealer and that's exactly what you want that's exactly what you don't want you do not want gobs and gobs of thick heavy concealer on because it's going to make your under eye lines come out maybe not immediately but give it an hour or two that's all you're gonna see you're gonna look like a leopard so my personal belief is the less makeup the better which means that you need to use better products so that they are able to actually do their job so that's all the concealer that I put on my entire face that's it all right so I use the splurge cream shadow brush because like I said it helps me to disperse the product without putting too much on. If I were to put this on with my fingers, I would need a lot more, but look at that. That's a lot of coverage because it's good quality stuff. So don't listen to the hype. If you need to glop things on in order to get them to be effective, you're not using good stuff. And unfortunately, it might look good for five minutes it is not going to withstand the test of an actual real life woman doing her damn thing during the day. I refuse to believe it. Cause I didn't use crap makeup before. I mean, certainly not inexpensive makeup. I was at Sephora and Ulta and I was buying all of the designer things. It was all off by the end of the day. And keep in mind that they're not selling you products that work for your face or work in collaboration with other products. They're just selling you whatever you'll buy. And I don't know, I just kind of have an integrity problem with that. If, for example, there was something that was incentivized by Unique to sell to you, but I knew it wasn't gonna be good for your skin because you had oily skin and it's really only good for dry skin, I would never sell it to you. Because I, I have this thing called a conscience, and it's very loud, and I just can't do it. So I will be very upfront and honest with you. If you want to buy something that's not good for your skin, based on what you've told me, I will tell you not to get it, and I will tell you to look at something else instead. Okay. So all of the areas that I'm concealing with the exception of this little gem right here. All the areas that I'm concealing are just to highlight and brighten my face. And I still have concealer left over on the back of my hand. You saw how little amount I used. That's because it's good. So it's all here right now. Um, so I'm gonna take the flat end of my blending sponge. There's two sides. There's the short flat, the long flat. I'm gonna take the short flat and I'm just gonna press it in like this. Now the reason that I'm doing my concealer first is I don't like to layer product. I don't like to put a full face of foundation on and then go in and put concealer on over it because I feel like those 
situations are when you're going to see your makeup sort of cake and crease more because you have too much on. So this is also the reason that one of these liquid foundations lasts me six months at least. I get six months out of these. The last found a, uh, concealer that I had was an eight month concealer. I did cut the back off of it right here where it's perforated and I, I put like a little sandwich clip on it to keep it closed and moisture inside of it, but honestly it lasted me eight months. It, it almost became like a joke. Every day I was like, okay, it's going to be our last day together, concealer. And then the next day I was using it again. It's kind of comical, I gotta say. All right, so second little note to make on concealer is never wipe it. Always press it. So I just kind of dab it in and it's going to blend in to my skin. The other thing I think about some people that are selling makeup is um, they're using more than they might need to because they want you to use more than you might need to because then it means you're going to have to restock sooner. I'm not saying that's exactly what's happening here, but it's my speculation. Okay, so Unique Touch Liquid Foundation. Um, it's a mineral-based foundation, so you always want to give it a really good shake and then dump the plunger a couple of times. And I put this on the back of my hand like that and I just kind of grab from this and I place it on my skin where I want it to go. So the whole reason that I don't add it all over my face first is I don't want all that buildup on the areas that I concealed because less is honestly more when you're doing your makeup. But I also put it in the areas that I want it to blend into so that um, I'm not smearing it all over. Okay, so now I go in with the round side of my blending sponge and I'm just going to press this in. Now, I didn't say this before, and I should have. This is the shade I let. I always feel like it's a pinch dark on me, but I can make it work. So I'm just blending this in in a stippling motion. So don't get too, if you feel better doing your foundation first and your contour second, you absolutely can. I just try to use as little product as possible, which is why I kind of do one before the other. But there's been plenty of times where I've gone in the reverse order and done the concealer second. So foundation is on, concealer is on, and everything is blended in just with that same stippling motion. Same sponge, same everything. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is set our makeup, which means that when you use a powder or a cream foundation or any product, you do need to set it with a powder so that it doesn't go anywhere. Today, for example, it is raining here to beat the band, and it's gonna be super humid. So I want to make sure that my makeup is set correctly. So I'm gonna go in, you have two choices when you set your concealer. One is setting powder, and the other is a pressed powder in a super light shade. So this is Scarlet Pressed Powder, which I do use sometimes, and this is a translucent setting powder. I'll use this today because I haven't actually used it in a while and I'm sure people are interested in what it is. So setting powder is translucent powder, super duper finely milled, and it's basically not going to change the color of what it's sitting on top of. It is just going to seal it together. All right, so I use a brush when I apply it because I don't like to bake. Baking is where you put a ton of product on your face 
and then you let it sit there for a few minutes and absorb all the moisture and then you dust it off. When I bake, I notice fine lines and wrinkles more and I'm not interested in that. So I actually take a lot of this product off and do one of these and just blend it in. So it's not gonna change the color of my concealer or anything for that matter. It's just going to set it so that it doesn't move at all. So I'm gonna do it in all the areas that I highlighted. And that's not to say that you can't go over this later if you feel like you want some extra brightness. You can still take that Scarlet Press Powder and go over it, but it wouldn't be a necessity because we're already setting with this. If you have mature skin or if you have any fine lines and wrinkles, I do not recommend baking. I feel like in that circumstance, you're applying too much product and you're gonna notice things that you don't wanna notice. All right, so highlight and foundation are totally done at this point. I'm gonna go in now with Beachfront Bronzer in the shade Malibu and I'm gonna contour my cheekbones. So the whole point of contouring is we already brought out the planes of our face with lightness so that they come forward and now we're gonna take the shadows of our face. Does that work better than the pressed powder with regard to fi hiding fine lines? Um, that's a good question. Yes and no. Yes, it's a, it's a necessary step if you're gonna use the cream concealer. It is, I like to use the pressed powder personally because I feel like I don't have to use this if I don't want to. Um, I'll show you at the end because I'm going to go through and clean this, my contour up and make it a little bit like brighter at the end. Um, I tend to go a little wild on the blush. I feel like neither are bad options. This is going to give you more color on your face, whereas the translucent is not going to give you any color. It's literally just going to make your concealer stay in place. So this is gonna give you two benefits, whereas the setting powder is only gonna give you one. That being said, the setting powder you can use anywhere on your face. You could use it on red lipstick or all over your foundation if you wanted to, but you don't need to. Um, I like this because if I ever do a powder routine, I, I like to stick with all powders. So if I ever do powder foundation, I like to use the powder concealer, even though this is a foundation too. Um, I like to go full powder. In the summer when it's really, really hot here in New York, I use the powder a lot more than I do in the winter because it's just so humid. Um, so I don't think you can make a bad choice. It's just that if you want, if you want to set your entire face, go with the setting powder. If you feel like you'll use it everywhere, go with this. If you feel like you're only going to buy this product to set your under eye, then we'll get you set up with a concealer, a powder concealer. Does that answer your question? If it doesn't, you can, that was kind of a very roundabout answer. So usually I'm more concise, so I do apologize. All right, so bronzer. This is Malibu bronzer. I'm gonna go through and just get into that hollow of my cheek right here and blend it up. I always start at the back of my cheek as opposed to the front because I want to deposit the most color back here. It's a hot mess when you put a full powder brush of bronzer right here. It's just going to look thick and too heavy. It's no good. So I always start towards the back and then blend towards the front like so. I see people leave things like this. Don't be those people. It just takes a second to blend it out. Another mistake I see, okay? I'm calling out the mistakes today. Do not put bronzer all over your face. Don't do it. There's no reason to use concealer if you're gonna put bronzer all over your face. I just, I had to say it. It's such a disaster. It's like if you wanted to put highlights on your face and then you just colored your whole head. There's no point in doing this. So bronzer is literally supposed to create shadows on your face so that 
you look like you have a healthier glow and it kind of sculpts like look at the difference in my forehead just after I did my forehead um, it's supposed to provide shadows and it's gonna like sculpt out your face so that you look longer and leaner and things like that if you were to put this everywhere then you're just gonna look tan you're not going to look like you have any kind of sculpted feature Ah, oh, I digress, I'm sorry. It's a little rant for me, but it's one of the things I can't stand. Especially after I see someone contour their face with concealer, and then they just go and they literally take a brush this size, and they're in there with the bronzer, and it's just going everywhere. I'm just like, I give up. I give up, why are you doing, why are you doing that? Don't do it. So chin area and jawline, I feel like benefit so much from a little bronzer. Instead of doing your whole face, stick to the areas that are actually going to give you the most bang for your buck, which is your bone structure. Really, these dark shadows should only go on your bone structure. All right, rant over. Let's use sisterly supple 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 blush which is this pretty like apricot color I love this I'm gonna love it even more in the summer because hopefully someday I have a tan it'll only come out of a bottle but that's fine so I'm gonna put a little supple right up above where I did my bronzer isn't that so pretty it's just like the nicest little bit of pinky warmth it's so believable and can I also tell you this is all that I do to put bronzer on done there's no back and forth in the pan trying to get all the pigment no you're using good products now you don't have to worry about that and just blend it in what a difference. I, I feel like I have hair in my mouth. I feel so much more finished when I have blush and lipstick on. And I used to be, I used to not own a single blush and a single lipstick. I liked clear lip gloss and I only used bronzer before I started doing unique because I felt like how much could it really help? Turns out a lot. <laughs> Surprise, a lot. All right, so I look of the day. I think I'll do something springy, being that tomorrow is Easter, and it's actually warm in New York, which is something we don't say very often here. So I think I'm going to use, nope, those are too dark. I think I'm gonna use, let's see, Lively, Gingerly. Gingerly is always a good bet. So these are also, this is funny enough, although I do like gloss, I'm the same way about it. Um, you will change your mind when you try the unique stuff, especially the sympathetic that I'm using today. I know is going to be gorgeous on your complexion, Kim. So um, I'm kind of excited for you to see it. That's kind of why I picked it today. All right, so I'm going with kind of like an orangey, soft pink today sort of vibe so these are the three colors that I'm gonna use and honestly two of these three colors I would have never picked for myself but I decided I needed to like go out of my comfort zone and try things that I don't normally use I've been using these forever all right so this is gingerly gingerly looks amazing on every eye color I would have never picked it for myself because it's just kind of nondescript it's sort of just like an orangey brown it didn't really do anything for me but it looks beautiful on number two lively do we even need to talk about it it's super orange right it's so pretty on especially if you have actually I love it on blue eyes I love it on my green eyes and it looks gorgeous on brown eyes so I think that this brings out like the warmth in everybody and I like a nice warm natural kind of glow like I'm not a really big blue eyeshadow person I really like people to look like they should look, just 
the next level of that. Like if we were all wearing a filter in real life, what would we look like? I feel like this is one of those shades that just brings out the best in everybody. So this is Lively. I'll put this on today. And then the third one that I'm going to use to just kind of mute everybody out is Discreet. And it's kind of like a ballet slipper pink. Very, very light. And um, I kind of just use this to blend the two colors together so that it kind of mutes them just a little bit and gives me like this pretty flesh tone color. So the first thing I'm going to do, now I don't use eye primer. I don't really know if, to be honest with you, maybe I should, but I usually just take whatever I have left over on my fingers when I prime my face and I just apply it to my lids. And so far, so good. It works really, really well. So there's the honest truth. I do not use eye primer. But I am going to do, when I go through with my highlight, I'm going to put a little highlight on my eyes too because I like to kind of spread the wealth that way. Where's my unique blending brush? Okay, so I'm gonna use my unique big fluffy blending brush. I use this sucker all the time and I'm gonna start with Gingerly, which is that sort of like brownish orange. And I'm gonna go in and put this in my crease and sort of wipe it onto my eyelid and you can just see it sort of acts like a shadow as opposed to like a full-on color but blending is key blending is super key we can always go in, if you're afraid that you're going too high up towards your brow, don't worry, we can always go in with a little bit of concealer and clean this area up afterwards. So don't be too afraid when you're doing your eyeshadow look that you're not gonna be able to like rein it in. Don't even worry about that. All right, so this is Gingerly. And now I'm gonna go in with Lively. Lively is that bright sort of fiery orange. I really want to find my deluxe brush. Of course, it's laying lifelessly on the bottom. All right, so this is the unique deluxe brush. It's got the angled fan brush on the top, and then it's got the sponge. I love that color. My eyes are hazel, so like pea soup green. Some days, like a golden brown. You're going to love this. I feel like this combination would be perfect for you then because honestly it brings out warmth without it um, looking muddy. And I find sometimes when you go gold it just shows up so much. I've really been loving oranges and I feel like oranges and pinks used to have a bad rap because people didn't blend them well. Um, but like these colors, for example, Gingerly is gorgeous and it's such a nice sort of segue into this that you're not going to notice it being too much. All right, so I'm going to take the angled brush side of my deluxe brush and I tap it off when I put it on. You can see how much pigment is still on there just from tapping this. I literally touched this once. That's how hyper pigmented our, our blushes are and everything is, but our shadows are hyper pigmented this way. If I was using this in like a cover girl, I'd be going back and forth a hundred times to get this much color on there and then it would all be on my under eye. But I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start sort of at the crease and blend it onto my lid. Again, just touching it once. And I tap it off just to get extra, like you can see the kind of the dust fly off. That's to keep anything from landing underneath my eye. And I'm just gonna place this basically from the crease over to my lid. Wow, it is actually pouring out right now. I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow for Easter. It's like a whole outdoor thing planned. All right, so you definitely get so much color punch 
with just going in here once. So this is a shade Lively. So I'm now gonna go in with the other side of my deluxe brush, and this is the sponge side, and I'm gonna grab some of this Discreet, which is that Ballet Slipper Pink, and I'm gonna put this right on the inside corner and just brighten my eye up and sort of soften it into that Lively. I like a bright inside corner of my eye and I don't always like to go in with a metallic because I feel like it looks a little juvenile. Not youthful, juvenile. Like I remember trying to look older when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And I'm like, you know what? Blue sparkly eyeshadow will do the trick. Oh, little Megan, you had so much to learn. And I don't, I have two boys. I don't even have daughters to like impart this wisdom on. Such a shame. All right, so that is our eye look. So now I'm gonna go in with mascara and just set this thing on fire. I cannot wait to get our 4D mascara. I'm just gonna say that right now. We're launching a 4D mascara, May 1st, and it's got all the fibers, they're Y-shaped fibers so that they grow even bigger. And it comes in one tube, it's not two separate tubes anymore. So no transfer gel and then fibers and then transfer gel. But this is my trusty Epic One Step Mascara. So I do two coats of it. And the first coat sort of acts like a primer coat. I get everybody coated really nicely. And then I go in with a second coat and that like really lengthens and separates everything. This is my favorite mascara to date, so I really can't wait to try the 4D. And if you are interested in getting it sooner, it does come in the presenter's kit. So if you are someone who uses Unique all the time or is interested in selling it and you wanna just buy it from yourself or you are interested in doing something crap like I do um, and selling it, you can um, grab the presenter's kit. If you hit my nose, a little description box will pop up and um, there's a link on my page to join my team. I'm a hot mess over here today. Can you see this? This is the third time I've done this. Hold please. I can't have, I can't be, <gasps> Chelsea's on. Hi Chels. Okay, all better. So I am always looking for women to join the old team. Loving makeup and skincare. I sometimes don't know what I like better about Unique is the makeup or the skincare because they've both been, basically the skincare was a lifesaver for me. It was a game changing moment because I'll be really honest with you, I was feeling not very good about myself when I had struggled for two years with just the worst acne. I had every facial in the world done. I had um, I had gone to the dermatologist about it. I was using like a $300 a month skincare system that was not fixing anything. It was just a disaster. And then I started Unique. And I stopped eating soy. And it was game changing. Lower lashes, I have very, very blonde lower lashes. So I just put a little bit of mascara on them. I don't like to go too wild because I don't like that tarantula lash look that I see <clears throat> a lot of sisters walking around with. It is not for me. Okay. Lashes are done. I'm done. Take it away. Done. Okay. Brows. What a difference lashes make though, right? Huge difference. Um, brows. Let's do our brows right now. Sorry, I just saw that mark up there popping out. And I needed to fix it really quick. All right, so brows. I use the Brow Obsession Palette. It's not that I don't like pencils. It's that 
am obsessed with my palette. It is the best bang for your buck you could ever hope to have. I've had this palette since February of 2018 and I'm only beginning to see a little pan right here in the gel. So <clears throat> if you're someone who does their brows frequently, do yourself a favor and get this palette because there's no reason to spend $50 a month on pencils when you could spend $50 every 18 months on one of these. It just mathematically, I'm no mathematician, but that just does not make sense. So I go and I have decent brows, but I fill them in and just kind of sculpt them out a little bit. So I just do the lower brow line And then I grab the upper brows and I just grab those little teeny baby hairs that live right on the top of my brow arch. And then I fill in from the arch down to the tail. And I slowly start to move forward towards the front of my brow and I just combine what I have left over on my brush and what is already on my brow and blend it together because the front of your brow is supposed to be the lightest and most sparse part of your brow. Girl, I need to go have my shape so bad I've always neglected mine. <clears throat> Honestly though, the fact that you've neglected them is probably to your benefit because I tweezed mine into oblivion when I was in middle school. Like I look back at pictures of myself and I'm like, why did my mother not have me committed to an asylum where they like reprogrammed me to hate tweezers? I don't know what I was thinking, but they were a disaster. So they're thinner now because I did that. Granted, it was sort of a short lived situation. So I was able to get some of them back but they're not what they could be. So um, if you have good brows to begin with, you're golden. Golden. I mean, the brow industry right now with like all the brow products that are out there and microblading and powder brow tattoos and everything is based on the fact that there were ridiculous people like me that existed in the late 90s. <laughs> and uh, we just went bonkers tweezing our eyes. I mean, maybe this is why I don't have a daughter because I would just be that mom that was like, you're not doing that. You're not going there. You're not wearing that. You're not doing this to your face. And uh, maybe it's, it's for the best that I have boys. I have to beg them to do anything to themselves. Shower, cut your hair, brush your teeth. It's, it's always such an experience in this parenting world. I used to think having babies was tough. Having babies was so easy compared to some of this baloney of having a four-year-old and an almost eight-year-old. Okay. Brows are done. Brows are done. I always feel so much more like myself when my brows are on. But you don't, like, I make mine slightly bigger. You don't have to do that. Like, you can literally just fill in exactly what you have, and it's, like, no harm, no foul. So I'm just going to take that same concealer brush, and I'm going to use the last of this concealer that I have on my hand. And I'm just going to go in and sort of sculpt out my brow, clean up the bottom a little bit. I always had too much brow, too. Half Italian. Ugh. But that's where you got that beautiful skin from. Oh my God, an olive complexion. Forget it. I am such a fool for an olive complexion. Um, my husband is Lithuanian, which I'm almost 100% Polish. And Lithuania is right next to Poland. But he has the most beautiful olive complexion. Like people always ask him if he is... Um, People always ask him if he's Italian or even Puerto Rican or Dominican because he, especially in the summer, all he has to do is walk outside and he's like this color. <laughs> he's like brown. 
Um, luckily, my kids tan because they have his genes. I do not. I do not at all. Um, but uh, yes, I'm a sucker for an olive complexion. He's got the best complexion and he's got like bright green eyes and uh, just perfect. Okay. So when I went in and did that, it just added that little bit of like a matte brightening highlight right on my brow bone. It fleeked out my brows just a little bit by like putting a little lightness underneath it. It just makes them look super sculpted and perfect. Done. Done. All right, so let's pick a highlighter now. Were there any highlighters you were looking at? I have three, so I can show you one of them. I'm going to show you three. Pick your favorite. You're going to pick today. All right, so Lustrous is a rose gold highlighter. So it's a little bit softer of a color, but you're still going to get a great glow. So that's Lustrous. This is Benevolent, which is like a soft kind of pearly gold. And then Iridescent is the brightest. It's a white prismatic highlight. Um, don't be afraid of it. it. It looks amazing on. Even my mom uses it. Um, she's hooked on it too, but this is her favorite. So pick your poison. We have white prismatic, um, iridescent. We have benevolent, which is the pearly gold. And then we have lustrous, which is the rose gold. What would you like to see? I think I'm leaning towards Benevolent. That was the one I was gonna pick. All right, perfect. So Benevolent is just a pretty sort of like pearly kind of, a, almost like a pearly ivory. So I put it right on my cheekbone. And you can just see like the glow that appears after that. It just, it's a really nice way to blend your blush into your concealer area. And I put it right over my, my brow arch. And then I go down my nose, right on the tip, on my cupid's bow. It makes your top lip look really big. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the inside corner of my eye using that deluxe brush. And it just adds a little extra glow to the eye. Right? Just pretty glowy. You look super fresh when you wear it. Uh, I don't know what I did without highlighter. Put that on the list. Blush, lipstick, and highlighter. What did I do before these things were in my life? I don't know. All right, so lips, I'm going to use, this is one of my favorite combinations. All right, so this is Pouty Lip Liner, which is a pretty nude. It's basically just like the perfect lip color. And I'm gonna use Sympathetic Splash Liquid Lipstick. So I love Sympathetic because it's got a little bit of like a more pronounced orange tone to it. So it's a nude, but with a little bit of extra pigment. So Pouty Lip Liner, Actually, I have to sharpen this slightly. Um, I was also never a lip liner person. I thought it was like an unnecessary extra step, but it does keep your lipstick in place so much better. It's like, because it's got that wax border, it's not gonna go anywhere. But also, it just helps to seal it in and define your lip shape. If you're going to overline your lips, only overline in the middle. I know I've said it 
a million times, but I'm going to continue to say it because I hate when people look like they got punched in the mouth. All right, so this is uh, Sympathetic Splash Liquid Lipstick. What I like about the splashes are this applicator. It makes it so easy to blend it into your lip. You're not putting too much on ever. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? These are all gonna be matte. And if you like a, like a brighter lip, then we'll just grab you a lip gloss to put over the top. And these lipsticks wear like braided steel. I will go to work with lipstick on. So I leave for work at 7.30 in the morning and I work until four and I'll check myself when I get in the car. It's basically all still there, like without reapplying during the day. So if you're going to add a gloss over the top of it, word to the wise is just let this dry for a minute and um, it basically will set the, make, the lipstick because it's it is very I'm afraid of looking like a clown but maybe I should step out of the box I'm queen of lip gloss um, that's not a bad thing it's really not I felt the same way in fact like I have some lipsticks that I really don't wear because all I see are my lips that like and I feel like I'm not used to seeing that I usually play up like my eyes or something like that but I feel like we have such a great plethora of neutrals and it's just picking the right neutral for your skin tone like this is a lot more color than I had on my lips before but because it's a neutral like if I look at myself in five minutes I'm gonna be like oh that's pretty it doesn't look like lipstick to me it looks like my lips just better and more pronounced um, but we do have the best lip glosses in the whole world my favorites are Lux, which is this like pretty pinky brown. You're gonna laugh when I show you this one. It doesn't look like this in real life when you put it on. Love sick. Doesn't this look like the most obnoxious color ever? I'm gonna put it on over this, okay? Love sick is probably my favorite lip color, lip lucrative lip gloss. It's great on its own. Isn't that gorgeous? It is not obnoxious at all. I wish it's just like the prettiest, almost like a, I don't even want to call it salmon because it's not that bright. It's like, it's like if you just got your lips beautifully exfoliated and they were just nice and rosy red. That is lovable. Like it, I, this came in my presenter's kit and I literally didn't touch it for nine months because I'm like, who the hell would wear this? Me, <laughs> pick me. This is my favorite shade now. And I have probably eight of our lip glosses. It's hard for me to pick a favorite cause I have like five favorites, but this one always seems to come to the top of the pack. So lovesick lucrative lip gloss all day all day all right so i'm just gonna go and take a touch of this this is my scarlet press powder i'm just gonna go make sure that my under eye is nice and bright with it i'm really not using very much product at all this is just a powder concealer brush That's all there is to it. So what do we think? It's pretty easy. I know it's a little long-winded because I can really get talking. Gab has never been a problem for me. Um, but it's, I, I have to say, after I threw out all of my other makeup, 
and I started just using this. I was really, really blown away by how products layered together the right way. Oh, I'm a moron. Touch Behold Setting Spray. Always finish with this. This is going to take all those powders that we put on and lock them together so that they're not going to go anywhere. If you live anywhere hot and humid, have a bottle and then have a backup bottle because in the summer these sell out. So I have stocked up and I have three of them in my makeup kit right now because I will not go without it. It's literally like, Gorge, can you list the eyeshadow colors? Of course, I'm gonna list, I'll take a picture in this terrible overcast lighting. I'll take a picture and then I'll list all the products that I used today so that you can take a look at them. But um, Chicago, yes. Um, I, I was constantly surprised every time I would add another product to my kit. Like, wow, why was I using this before? Because these products are all built to go together. Whereas when I was buying one of this and one of that and one of, you know, Sephora's brand and one of Kat Von D's brand, they're not built to go together. You really should stick with a line of products that are built to go together. And I feel like sometimes the brands that you get at Sephora aren't even really built to do that. So that's the end of my rant. But needless to say, I'm super glad that I found this stuff because I do feel like it just works really, really well for my skin. It all blends in really well together. If you're looking to go overboard and you like a really loud, obnoxious look, you can pull it off. But for me, I just like to look like myself, but like the Instagram filter version of myself just walking around. Um, but thank you for coming on today. I will be back tomorrow for Easter. I can't promise that I'm going to do anything too special, but, you know, I'll be on. <laughs> um, so I'll see you then, but I will go take a unfiltered selfie, and then I'll list all the products that I use today so that you can take a look. And then if you have any questions or you want to get at me for anything, just shoot me a message. Do you line your eyes? I used to. Um, I used to line my eyes... A lot but now I more or less go in with a shadow and I'll use one of these skinny little liner brushes like so so this is gingerly I usually go in and do one of these and line my eyes this way if you want to concentrate the color, you just have a little thing of water next to you, dip your liner brush in water, touch this, and line your eyes. It's going to concentrate it, and it's almost going to go on like a liquid liner. Um, my favorite, favorite color for doing that is Marvelous. Um, it's this dark chocolate brown here. I like it because it's not as harsh as a black, but it shows up just as dark as a black. What I also love about doing this with an eyeshadow is you can really customize it. So I have a lot of eyeshadows, right? Even in like the Addiction palette, like here's Addiction palette one. I could use any one, two, or three as a liner at any time. So when you get an eyeshadow palette, not only did you just score seven eyeshadows, but you got three eyeliners with them. All you need is a liner brush and a little bit of water. When you touch this, wet to it it's going to concentrate the pigment and then it's going to glide on like a hot knife through butter and then it's going to blend into your makeup even better because it's using all the same tones and colors that you're using for your eyeshadow so that is i do have i have a ton of liners like these are all my liners i have a ton of them um but i really don't use them until i'm going for like a really dramatic look um, I like a lighter look now, and now that my brows stand out a little bit better, I don't feel like I may need to make my eyes quite so dark. Um, although I will show you a little trick with liner if you feel like you have small eyes or you want to look more awake. Um, our white liner in Pristine, you just put it on your lower waterline here, and it brightens and wakes up your eyes. In high school, however, we used to wear white liner on top of our eyes, and it was all the rage. Thank God those days are over. But it just kind of whitens up the lower 
part of your eyes it makes them look bigger little trick so this is the white eyeliner in pristine um, but no for really for liners most of the time unless I'm going like over the top or I'm going like for a gala or something like that and I want to use something like winged I will take my eyeshadows and just concentrate the color in a little water works great for mama and um, they last forever 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 that way so that's my story. Thank you for coming on. If you have any questions, always message me. I'll get right back to you. Um, I hope it was helpful. And uh, we'll build you a kit really soon. Thanks, guys.